Our adventures in Alaska's Kenai Peninsula continue. Today we're going to explore historic Kenai and Soldatna's breweries. We also happen to be here during the Salmon Run, so we'll get to experience this uniquely authentic Alaskan activity as thousands of locals gather here for dip net fishing. Then we're heading to Homer, the Hollywood capital of the world. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. This Alaska weather. Hopefully it'll improve. Our first stop, well, priorities. We must visit the dump station. We really have no idea where we're going to stay tonight, so we want our fresh tank full and our holding tanks empty. For this part of the trip, we're making no reservations. We're just going to wing it. By the way, lots of construction on this section of the Seward Highway. And rain. Let's take a break here at the Turn Lake Pullover, at the junction of the Seward Highway No. 9 with the Sterling Highway No. 1, which is the one we're taking next. Yeah, yeah, we stopped on the side of the road here, with a view, kind of, sort of, and uh, we were once again going to make one of those pizzas. This one is not the Cuban style inspired, this is Mediterranean inspired. Mm. Well, bon appetit. Not a bad place for lunch, let me tell you. Not a bad place. Even in this weather. And I have a feeling boondocking might be allowed here, so not a bad overnight place either. Aside from the road noise, perhaps. But I'm sure it quiets down at night. Hey, did I startle you? I see some very impressive mountains in the distance and the weather seems to be improving. In a version of the plan, we were gonna stay at Fred Meyer in Soldatna, which seems to be very RV friendly. In fact, the parking lot looks like an RV park. But we discovered another campground in Kenai. It is appropriately called Port of Kenai, so that's where we're going. Here we are, located at the site of an old historic cannery dating back to 1912. Let's just say the RV park is still under development, but the location is impeccable, right next to the boat ramp. Well, we're right here, we found the place, this is called the Port of Kenai, and uh, $75 for dry camping here which is uh, steep, but I think it's the time of the year and where we are and when we are. And uh, it's that fishing season and everybody seems to be out there on the river. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna walk around uh, this place and, uh, and see what it is all about. Yeah, we're gonna... This place, they just opened up, by the way. Apparently it's, uh, it's been open for... This, they just bought it and this, they bought this area and... Uh, and I think they're still trying to figure out how to make it an RV park. <laughs> Here we've got everybody fishing. Look at that.
I believe that's Mount Redoubt, an active volcano, one of the many mountains in the Aleutian Range visible from Kenai. The main thing people do here is dip net fishing. They have all these big round nets, they dip them in the river and hopefully catch some salmon. It is totally a thing. First, let's go by the visitor center, learn a little about this place. The visitor center illustrates the area's rich history, first settled around 1000 AD by the Nine Athabascans, then Russian fur traders after the construction of Fort St. Nicholas in 1791. And then, along with the rest of Alaska, Kenai became part of the United States in 1867. There is a self-guided walking tour that we are going to take right now. But first, let's look at all these taxidermized animals on the wall. All right, I think we're going to go for a quick walking tour here of the historic downtown area, Kenai. We've got to get on one of those planes still. At some point, before we leave Alaska, we have to... Uh, what is this? This is steam donkey. Yes, this steam-powered contraption was used to pull fishing boats out of the water for winter storage and maintenance. Our first historic building here is Moose Range Headquarters, used until 1980 as the headquarters for the protected moose habitat. Here's a recreation of Fort Kenai, built in 1967 for the Alaska Centennial Celebration. The original fort was built by the U.S. Army in 1869 and housed more than 100 soldiers. There, that's the interpretive sign. Here's the historic Russian Orthodox Church, built in 1894, still used for regular services. Let's see if it is open. No, it is closed. It is, by the way, the oldest Orthodox church on mainland Alaska and the National Historic Landmark. Oh, this one is historic too. The oldest building on the whole Kenai Peninsula dating back to 1881. Here's the also historic St. Nicholas Chapel, dating back to 1906. An early settler's cabin from 1898. Notice how low satellite dishes point at this high latitude, even here in southern Alaska. This is a trail that goes down to the beach and I see some people fishing in the distance, so let's head down there. A couple of days ago I mentioned that Kenai Peninsula in general was the touristy part of Alaska. Well, this here might be an exception. I think this is authentic Alaska. In fact, dip net fishing is an activity that only Alaska residents are allowed to do. And only in July. During this time of the year, Alaskans are also allowed to camp here, right here on the beach. 
It is certainly an activity enjoyed by the whole family, and I am so glad we were able to experience it, to time it right, to go beyond the tours and experiences and come see something truly authentic, even if only as spectators. Let's continue exploring. Interesting looking building. Here we have a sculpture called Fish Camp. Who would have thought it is a wellness center, like a hospital? Whenever you wander around the town like this, you end up, you know, stumbling upon, you know, different things like that wellness center, for example, that looked uh, architecturally very interesting with the statues and all that. Now we're looking for the oldest uh, bar here in town. I believe it is called the Kinai Joe's. So, Kinai Joe's, here we come. Here's a park which might have a view, so let's check it out. This is a statue called the Boy Scout. Yep, I knew the views were going to be good, but in this case, it is just the sheer amount of people dip netting down there. Historic house from 1935. That one looks like a modern igloo. Even Alaska flamingos. I just can't get over all the people dip net fishing everywhere on both sides of the river. Here we are at Kinai Joe's Tap House, established in 1935. It is the oldest operating bar in Kinai. It certainly has that local dive bar atmosphere. In a good way, we might return here. Let's head down to Soldatna and see if we can get some dinner. And it is raining again. Señor Pancho's here has a very long waiting time, so we've come to St. Elias Brewery. After a short wait, here we are. Oh, cheers. This place is famous for the pizza. Great ambience too, by the way. So we came back to Kinai Joe's for a nightcap, as you do. And we're going to experience the most unique old fashioned we've ever had. That looks marvelous. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. And as I've said many times, a virtual private network is an essential tool for us digital nomads, travelers, and uh, you know, even, even us, you know, we have belts and suspenders, we have Starlink, several cell phone carriers. The time will come when we're gonna be in that wooded remote area where the only internet is that potentially insecure campground Wi-Fi or coffee shop hotel, you name it. Sometimes they don't even have passwords. And that's when a VPN becomes essential because, because it creates a private, secure connection between your devices and the internet for your eyes only. And that's very important. Of course, it is always good practice, even if you're connected to your own internet, uh, to have it. Besides, you can change your location virtually around the world. They have servers pretty much everywhere. And uh, let's say you are abroad and you wanna watch your, your local programming, or you are in your home base, but you wanna see something that is only available in a different country. It's, it's only a couple of clicks away and you can change your location around the world in seconds. And it's got many other features, like, like a true incognito 
title search for your eyes only. So check it out. If you go to surfshark.deals slash myrv and you enter promo code myrv at checkout, they have a very good Black Friday special right now. For a limited time offer, you get 81% off and up to six months for free. Oh, what a difference a day makes. In fact, we're getting our first good weather day in like a whole week. But uh, yeah, beautiful blue skies. It's around 60, sunny, so you know, almost t-shirt weather. But let's uh, let, let's see how the, the fishing activity is going out there on the bay, at the mouth of the river. Uh, it is a fishing frenzy down there. Look at all those decaying fish heads down there. Probably discarded by fishermen after cleaning their catch. And the smell. I kind of wish you could smell it too. Well, maybe not. Let's just say it smells fishy. And look at all the boats out there. Sometimes I wonder how they manage not to collide with each other. to the Kenai viewing platform. And could that be the summit of Mount Iliamna? I don't really know. All I know is that it is a fishing frenzy out there on the Kenai River estuary. We visit some of our old familiar places from yesterday, but with today's pristine weather, it almost makes you want to become a citizen of Alaska just to be able to do this. Even though I'm not really into fishing, but it looks like such an Alaska thing to do. Let's go for a drive. Beluga whales, we haven't seen those. We've, however, seen caribou. And uh, over here, what we see is a huge mountain. This is called the Kenai River Flats Viewing Platform. Crossing the Kenai River, let's explore a little more of the town. Let's see if we can get to that beach where everybody is camping and dip netting. Apparently, you can't get there unless you pay, so let's continue. Coming up here, the Kasilov River Special Use Area. Lots of people with RVs here. And lots of people fishing there, too. Well, I decided to come to Kenai Brewing Company in Soldotna. It's just a wild guess. I think they've been fishing, or going fishing. Well, here we are. This place comes highly recommended. We're having some poutine, even though we're not in Canada. Huge mm, burger and soup. We definitely ordered way too much food, and I like these wall decorations. Kenai River Brewing. Yeah, this is very nice, and the great weather certainly enhances the experience. That was really good. Oh, check it out. They do make their own beer. Came back to Old Town Kenai to see some of the sites with this much improved and uh, I hear uncommon weather. The church and the skies certainly match now. And you can even see the mountain.
everybody's coming back. Cleaning the fish. That is, I believe, Mount Iliamna back there. And that's Mount Redoubt. Now back at the campground. I believe this may be our first true sunset since we arrived in Alaska. It is later in the season and we are farther south, so the sun sets a little earlier. Not much earlier. It is beautiful out here. It is a fitting frenzy for all these birds right now as the anglers are coming back and cleaning their catch of the day. Once again, beautiful views of Mount Iliamna, which we'll be seeing a lot more of it, and Mount Redoubt. is just magical. Departing. Good morning. We're leaving Kenai, which uh, has been a great experience actually. Especially now that we have this perfect weather. I mean, those mountains back there. I don't know if you can see them. I'll zoom in. They almost look fake. What a picturesque uh, town here. And, uh, you know, and we got to experience that salmon run, which is uh, it's an experience unto itself. Well, today going only less than two hours to Homer, Homer, Alaska. That will be our southernmost point here on the Kenai Peninsula. Let's stop really quick to see the view. I'm sorry if I'm being kind of repetitive with these mountains, but I'm just mesmerized, in awe at their magnificence.
let's check out this place by the water. It looks like another fish camp. I mean, we're obviously not gonna do any fishing, but the views across Cook Inlet are just spectacular. Eventually, we arrive at the Homer KOA and let me tell you, some of these sites have some great views, particularly on a clear day like today. But we weren't able to get any of these sites. In fact, we got the last available site, since, as I said, for this part of the trip we're no longer making reservations. We're doing everything same day or first come first served. Although, let me tell you, this campground kind of makes me wish we had planned ahead and booked in advance. Let's go into Homer, mainly to what is called the Spit, which is the main touristy area. Oh yeah, this is going to be a spectacular view. What a great view! And we haven't seen these mountains before. There it is, the famous Homer Spit. Over the next few days, we're going to make Homer our home base. From here, we're going to go on what perhaps will be the most amazing adventure of the whole trip. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Riding